I just wanted to address Bella Goes to Hell's um, question concerning the improvement of the world or of our condition, the human condition. Personally, I don't believe that the human condition has improved uh, ever or that it is significantly deteriorated. I suppose in certain ways, uh, in certain periods, there's blips on the map. For example, the Second World War and the Holocaust and the atom bomb was definitely a downward blip. <laughs> um, but other periods, such as the age, believe it or not, that we're living in right now is something of an upward blip. But we're just, say, one uh, nuclear disaster against uh, away from going into a, a downward blip again. Um, and we're just, say, the cure for cancer away from going into an upward blip. But as a whole, I don't believe that the human condition actually fundamentally changes from millennium to millennium. I really do not. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that the some value of our existence improves from one um, one century, one millennium to the next. Um, studying history as I have, um, I won't really say that I've come to the conclusion that previous civilizations have dealt with things like death <laughs> and existence in a healthier way than we have, but it certainly looks that way from the, our current perspective. Um, they seem to have been a lot more realistic about the whole thing. Once when I was uh, <clears throat> on my way, I got lost on my way to try and find Pompeii in southern Italy, um, just south of Naples, I passed by a cemetery, and uh, the um, cemetery written over the gate in Latin was, Once we were like you, one day you will be like us. <laughs> um, can you imagine putting that on the cemetery in the West, uh, in, in Canada? No, people, there's no way anyone would do that. That's just too depressing. We take death and we put it out of our minds. I get the distinct impression, and, and Pompeii actually is a good example of this, of how people saw death as simply a fact that that's just something that's going to happen and might as well come to terms with it, or at least attempt to come to terms with it. Um, <clears throat> and the more that our civilization progresses, the more that we, the better we get at feeding people and curing diseases and limiting our population, etc., which limiting our population we seem to be having problems with, but we may end, end up getting there. <laughs> um, the less, uh, capacity we have to cope with our own mortality. Now, again, I have nothing to go on here other than just a feeling, but again, and, and again, I don't know how people lived in other ages, but it does look as though they, you know, were willing to sort of sing the worms crawl in, the worms crawl out, be merry, my friend, etc., than we are. It's just, okay, we're all living on borrowed time, let's forget about it all, or let's just deal with it, you know. And when the Reaper comes, well, I knew this was coming all along, whereas in our civilization we tend to sort of put that out of our heads. That seems to be the corollary to actually improving our physical life, is we don't want to sort of think about the nasty realities. Uh, and we take the nasty parts of our history, like the Second World War, and we put them in things like history books, and we neatly catalog them and turn them into a series of historical formulae. The rise of the Nazis, uh, the campaign against uh, the Western Allies in the early summer of 1940, etc., uh, as though these were actually coherent things that had a beginning and an end, whereas they weren't. They were just things that happened and uh, didn't really, there was no actual coherence to them at the time. They were just things that were taking place. We have in the West a linear conception of time. Um, which is not actually the norm in human history. Most of human history, people just believe that the world just was. Uh, it just was 
there in front of us. Whereas in in our way of thinking, for example, today it's currently 5:21 a.m. on. Geez, I don't even know what the uh, what the date is today. On the 10th of July. 2013. We know that this day is significant, or <laughs> we know that this day is significant and that this day will never happen again. Um, we, uh, we hold that this particular date in history has come, has arrived now, and will never happen again. It is unique. Well, looking at other civilizations or other ways of thinking, they would, it's almost fair to say that they know exactly the opposite, or they felt exactly the opposite. You look at, say, the Mayan calendar or the, the calendars of just about any other uh, uh, civilization pre, say, 15th century, um, they all just sort of said that they, they generally followed their, their calendar, they named their years in cycles that would repeat themselves. The best example of that is the Chinese calendar, the Chinese zodiac it's now come to be called. They have all these years that just cyclically, cyclically repeat themselves. The Christian sort of idea sort of said, Jesus lived in this year and boom, now we're starting the clock ticking. This is kind of a, I won't say it's a unique thing, but it's, it's not something that was the norm throughout human history. This idea that there is a beginning and an end to everything and once one day is gone. Uh, it's never coming back. It's 5.23 a.m. now. Here's on my uh, my old clock. It's old. It says made in Czechoslovakia, which is a country that ceased to exist in 1991. That's how old this thing is. Uh, it still works, actually. So much for the idea that everything made in a communist country was junk. But... Uh, <laughs> You notice the dial on the clock is round. It's 5.20 now. It'll be 5.20 again in 12 hours. It'll be 5.20 again in 24 hours. So we simultaneously live in a linear and a cyclical sort of time. It's uh, the 9th of July now, or the 10th of July. It'll be the 10th of July again, and again, and again, ad infinitum. Um, and this doesn't even begin to talk about the fact that all these dates that we've come up with are completely arbitrary. We've just, boom, dropped anchor and started to count from there for whatever reason. Right now we're dealing with uh, the Christian religion. That's the calendar that looks like it's set to take over the world. Uh, arguably it already has. Um, but it it's an artificial imposition on a world that in many ways just sort of is. I understand for the sake of utility, it's good to have this kind of view of time. Because even as I say, people in previous ages thought differently and didn't see time this way. It's still useful when we want to go back and look at these people to count backwards using our present calendar. But that gives us a false sense of the reality behind that view of time. Um, now, the reason why I think that a particular view of time is so important is that you've got to work it out what it, what it actually means in your own head. Uh, otherwise, you're sort of constantly sort of stuck in not so much, well, I guess what it's, it's what the Easterners would call the wheel of existence, the before, the beginning, and the after, which goes on forever, and it's just an endless weariness that never stops and drives you insane after a period of time, and the only thing to do is to get off it. Um, and the interesting thing about getting off of it is they all preach you've got to give up your conception of linear time. I can understand that. Um, now, I'm an English-Canadian, and one of, the, one of the things about uh, Canada is we've got two official languages and thus two dominant cultures, which not many countries fit into that category. Two dominant cultures and the French culture, while numerically superior, uh, inferior rather, they have there's fewer French Canadians than, than English Canadians. The, the French Canadians are very vocal in pushing their, their culture. I shouldn't say pushing it. Uh, they would say defending it or um, asserting it or maintaining it or whatever, which is uh, I have no problem with. But you do get to see from the other side that there is a different view of everything. 
one of the ways in which French Canadians and English Canadians are sometimes juxtaposed is the saying that holds that English Canadians, for an English Canadian, life is all about doing. You do things. You, um, things have a, a planning stage, they have an execution stage, and then there's a result stage. We approach absolutely everything in that way to the point where you get that kind of thing working into your, into your everyday language. Uh, when you go on vacation, you don't visit Paris, you do Paris. You don't uh, um, go to a restaurant, you do a restaurant. Oh, yeah, I did that restaurant and it was it was pretty good. And you know, it, it puts everything in sort of this continuum that never seems to stop. It's going from one side to the other, from left to right. The French Canadian way of thinking, it is said, is all about being. The English way of looking at the universe is doing. The French way of looking at the universe is being. It's not a question of um, seeing the world as an endless series of tasks, an endless series of moments, the one following on the other, with the past and the future more or less present in the present. Um, the French-Canadian attitude stereotypically is you can sort of, they have the capacity to step out of this uh, business of causality. When they sit down and order a meal, they can make it last for three hours because they're in their being stage. Now in Europe, the, the genius of the French, the continental French, as we call them here in Canada, is that they seem to have the capacity for both. That's, you know, the, the southern Mediterranean peoples are the ones who are all about being, and the northern peoples uh, you know, say the Germanic or uh, Celtic or whatever, you, Protestant, whatever people you want to call them, are all about doing things. In other words, the Southerners enjoy their lives, the Northerners are efficient. Well, the French seem to be this happy medium between doing and being, um, which may be true, I don't know. But in English Canada, the line seems to be noticeable when we try to, when we both, when each Canadian culture looks at the other, we see a profound difference. And it's an interesting difference, and it has to do with what you make of this thing. Is this thing something that rules you? In other words, does it affect every last aspect of everything? No matter what you do, there's a result to it. No matter what you think, there is a result to it. And there is a before, a during, and an after. Or is there a place where you are just being? Is there something simultaneous to doing that is being? Um, I tend to think that there is actually such a thing as being. I tend to think that there is such a thing as existing independent of this endless series of events that seems to rush by at all times. Um, can one actually prove such a thing? No, you can't. But you can't prove either that there is a before, a during, and an after anything. Show me the future. Show me the past. Where, where is it? I want to see it. You, you can't prove it. You can reach for a book and point at a book and say, see, there's the past. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's just, we take that as self-evident, where, in fact, it's nothing of the sort. So it's just a question of um, your view of actual time, how much you're going to be um, affected or perhaps how much you believe in time. If you think that the age that we're living in is fundamentally in terms of the in terms of meaning different from one age to the next, well I what can I say? I fundamentally disagree. We live in an age where we're spoiled rotten, we have enough to eat, there's very few wars, although eh, you're in Croatia so you probably know that's not always the case everywhere on the planet, but compared to most ages that we've lived in, um, we're fairly peaceful. But, as I say, we're just one <laughs> blip away from another catastrophe. Um, I don't think that the world has changed or has been improved. I don't think it's going down the tubes, either. I think it's something that's just there in front of us that we have to cope with. Um... Now, I know what the usual ripe post of that sort of thing is. It's a pile of 
denunciations over. Are you saying that the Holocaust was just a blip and all this kind of thing? All right, well, if you want to paint me in that way, then go right ahead. I don't think that you do, but um, I think that that actually is a common response to my view of things. But that kind of, in in my opinion, reveals something of a, I don't know, sense of weakness. The fact that you don't have any response to that other than denouncing somebody, other than saying you moral pig, uh, you think that uh, that the Holocaust was not a serious uh, event, where in fact it, it certainly was. Yes, it was. But do we want to imprison ourselves by it? Um, do we want to have it um, color our view uh, permanently of the human condition? Well, no, I don't. And it's for the same reason that I don't want somebody to tell me that God exists because I see a flower or because a child is born. Some people say that this is all that you need, is you need to see something beautiful in nature and boom, God exists. Well, it doesn't work that way for me. Um, it might work that way for a lot of people, but all you have to do is see some of the miracles in life and life is wonderful. Uh, I don't buy that. Uh, uh, I don't think you do. But I think that you might have actually seen somebody who thinks along those lines. Just, life is beautiful. Um, it's, you know, either way, if you ask me, is equally um, unacceptable for me. <clears throat> to be imprisoned by a view that life is wonderful because I simply see something nice is to disregard all the evidence to the contrary and to conclude that life is horrible based on uh, something that I see which is horrible is to ignore all the evidence that I see to the contrary of that. Uh, even weighing the scales one way or another won't do simply because we've got, you know, again, endless amounts of evidence uh, one way or another, and if you want to take sides in that, you go right ahead. I'm not going to play that game. Um, so, no, I don't believe that life is actually improving, and I don't believe it's going down the tubes either. It just seems to be sort of shifting from one sort of... Uh, area of emphasis to another. But ultimately, no, I think the world just sort of is. Um, and it has to be coped with, don't get me wrong. Just because the world, <laughs> it, it just is, it doesn't mean that I'm just going to sit there and smile while somebody swings a baseball bat at my head. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to do something to, you know, deal with that fact. But that doesn't mean that I, that the world is a good or a bad place. Uh, it's just, whether I like it or not, it's got to be coped with. But coping with the world and placing value on it are not the same thing. I rather suspect that this is going to be an ongoing discussion. <laughs> Have a good one.